there is definitely a fungus among us every moment of the day. The fungal kingdom embraces an estimated million or more species. Within each of us, about a hundred species alone thrive. Types of fungus most commonly known to us include yeast, mushrooms, and mold. When mold comes into our homes, it can be a killer. Over 25 million Americans suffer from some sort of allergic reaction to mold-related toxins, called mycotoxins, released into the air. An undetermined number of these sufferers will die every year from overexposure. The fact is, any mold can be toxic if that person's allergic to it. If these guys look like they're suiting up to confront a biohazard, it's because they are. They're mold remediation specialists, and they have to protect themselves by preventing potentially harmful spores from invading minor cuts on their skin or entering their lungs. Mold removal or remediation is a $3 billion a year industry in the United States. The goal of remediation is to create a clean, dry area with a normal spore count. In other words, fewer spores inside the home than out. All we want to do is get it to a normal level. It is an impossible goal to get a mold-free structure in a residential home. To remove serious mold growth, the remediators often remove carpet and drywall from the room, sometimes treating the wood structure behind it. There are several ways you can treat the studs depending on the severity of the damage. You can sand them. In some cases, you might even be able to wipe them down. Before the remediation, a mold specialist must come in and evaluate how serious the problem is. Once he confirms the presence of mold in one area of the home, the consultant collects surface and air samples from nearby rooms to locate any cross-contamination. These samples make their way to an independent lab for spore count analysis, as well as mold identification. While the spore is the mold's way of traveling through the air, it is also its main reproductive body, similar to a plant seed. From the spore, a hypha, or branch grows. A collective of these hyphae, known as mycelium, is the mold's root-like system, the part of the mold visible to the naked eye. The mycelium emit enzymes to break down nearby food, in this case the wall itself, in order to absorb or ingest nutrients. More spores, more mold. They produce colonies and they spread their spores out. Usually that's in a circular pattern. And while many people fear the notorious black mold, actually many molds are black. And many other colorful molds can be just as dangerous. Some molds release toxins as means of self-defense. If these mycotoxins are in high enough concentration, mold needs two simple ingredients to thrive. Virtually any organic substance will do for the food. The only thing we can try to control is the water. But sometimes nature has a way of spoiling our best efforts. During a series of heavy rains, the water came up through the floor. It began to be absorbed into the building materials. As a result of the building materials being cellulose, mold began to eat that as a food source, and it began to grow. Another contributing factor to many basement mold problems, humidity. In this case, the relative humidity in the building is 84%, and the temperature is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. You want a relative humidity in a structure between 40 and 60%. The faster the area is dried, the less likely you are of having this type of a situation. While this wall will have to be removed by specialists, a more common form of mold in many homes is found in the bathroom. Often referred to as mildew, it embodies all the risks of other mold invasions, but is usually more treatable. What's the cause of this? Almost always the cause is improper ventilation. And you do simple things to, to help prevent this from reoccurring. Leaving the shower door or curtain open when you're finished is a great first step. When cleaning mold of any size, there is at least one rule of thumb. The one I would say don't use is bleach. The bleach stays on the very surface. So when you do use bleach to clean it, bleach is always mixed in water. The water is doing more damage than the bleach is actually doing beneficial. 
first step is fix the problem, dry things out, kill it so it doesn't come back, and then clean it with any household cleaner you want to use it with, except bleach.